It's not the things inside my head that keep me going Don't need someone to throw me money, they should show it Keep chasing shadows, they're always haunting me But I believe in something bigger What's up, Active Fam? So today's Friday, which means the big Nate dogs here. We're going to be filming another training session for you guys. Yep, there he goes. Anyway, so today we decided that we're going to do an arm session for you. The last one we did was uh, the chest workout, and the one before that was our shoulder workout. <laughs> That's telling us the volume of the microphone. So you got two microphones, left one and right one. Where? So when we plug our mics in next week. <coughs> So we bought new mics for you guys, and Nate's going to be strapped up, bang, channel one, I'm going to be bang, channel two, and then we're going to merge the channels, bang, and then we're going to be all one big channel. Right, TFM, ABW series, so, it has got the washing out. Billy's going to say hello. Oh, oh, oh. Alright, so we're doing triceps to start the workout off today. Usually when we do arms, we want to try and target the weaker right. muscle first. Point the camera properly at what you're shooting. <laughs> Don't just walk around like this talking to the camera. <laughs> all right, all right. Look at look at it and hold it up here so there's more stability, alright? <laughs> yeah I know. I don't really think do I? Yeah. Alright stability muscles are on. Alright, so we're starting with triceps today. Now what we like to do is we try and identify the weaker muscle in the arms. So what we're going to target is a long head today. So what Eddie's doing from the top of the movement, which is the full stretch right here, is initiating the contraction of the long head of his tricep, and he's grabbing the contraction from the top of the motion, bang, squeezing it down, and holding a hard contraction, and his mind is compressing the weight through here. As you can see, we have two major heads, I suppose. There's three heads. We have two major heads to the tricep, the long head and the short head. And most people right there lack in this area right here. So if you can, guys can work on that area, getting some nice thickness through there, it's gonna change the dynamics of your arm. When it comes to triceps, literally there is, I reckon, 10, 20 different ways you can do a tricep push down. You can lean forwards, you can lean back, you can you know, use some sort of leverage technique. There are so many different ways you can target triceps. You can even do a tricep push down and, and almost do a dip tricep push down in one. And it all kind of does something a little bit different. So it depends what you're trying to target to what exercise you guys want to do. Right, so we got Nath wearing the signature green khaki t-shirt again today. Just so you guys know, he's got about five of these. So it's not the same one that he wears every week. <laughs> you know what? It's a really beautiful, luxurious fit. It's it just, opulent. It just goes. So I have already ordered a custom ABW 5XL t-shirt for him. In three colors as well. I told the suppliers, we're going to make... 2XL and then just jump straight to 5XL for Nate. There's no in between. We're not even going to worry about the 3 and 4s. So from the top of the motion, what I'm doing right now is I'm feeling a full stretch through the long head of my tricep. From here, I'm initiating the contraction. We go down. I'm going to hold the squeeze like that. And on the way out, making sure we're levering the weight through the long head of the tricep. And most people stop here. Don't stop here. This annoys me. Go up. All like get a full stretch of your tricep, full range of motion. That way you're gonna develop a full long head on your tricep. And a superset. Oh, Jesus. You know what we're gonna do here? We're gonna grab these two fingers. We're gonna hold the cable like this. We're gonna hold this pole here. And when we, it's almost like a tricep kickback, I suppose, with the cable. And you're just isolating that long head and holding the squeeze. There's not the range of motion is shorter in this exercise because we're not trying to stretch the entire tricep, just my long head. Almost like I can track the weight and I almost kick the weight up a little bit like that. So we're all about balance and symmetry. So Nate's always going to start with his left side in order to help bring up that side to balance with this bad boy right here. Now let's talk about the long head for a second, why it's important. First of all, with this exercise, what Eddie's doing is as he's contracting his tricep, he's keeping his arm straight, he's not moving his elbow, and he's kind of lifting his entire arm up once he straightens his arm. The reason we're doing that is we're trying to put the pressure of the weight nice and high up to the top where his tricep originates from. That's going to give him that nice round swoop that kind of connects straight from his shoulder, bang, 
tricep swoop. If he just locks his elbow and doesn't lift his arm up from a full lock, what happens is it's still going to work his long head, it just won't work the peak of his long head or where his long head originates from as much. Now throughout today's workout and pretty much every single other workout me and Eddie, Eddie and I do, it looks like we're just doing regular exercises, but where we apply our mind and to where we squeeze the muscle, that is the difference to our training and regular training. We're trying to create an overall balanced, symmetrical proportion physique, and that is all driven by your mind, because every muscle in your body isn't gonna grow simultaneously together. Different parts of your body grow at different rates, so what we need to do is you need to identify which parts of your body grow at a faster rate, which parts grow at a slower rate, and make those slower muscles work harder. Beautiful. And now, I found myself personally, and from a lot of other athletes in my team, that when trying to develop thickness and size through your arms, you gotta kinda lift heavier. Heavier, as heavy as you possibly can go. And you gotta push out those force reps. Now, in order for us to develop a portion symmetry balance and then push out those massive force reps and do a heavier workout, what you want to do initially from the start of the workout is put blood in the area of your tricep or bicep, vice versa, or both, in the area you want to grow the most. Get that area full of blood, then once it's full and active, then go on the heavy weights. Because when you push out those force reps, once the underactive muscle is full of blood, that's the muscle that's going to work. Alright, so touching base on heavy lifting when it comes to arms and development. Now, me personally, and I, I reckon a lot of you guys out there would find you have exactly the same problem. The long head of my tricep, right, especially down where it inserts in the bottom there, that's the weakest part of my arm. So, what I'm gonna do first, is I'm gonna get my triceps with absolutely no weight, right? I'm gonna stand here and do this, and what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna, from, from this point here to there, with just, with absolutely no weight, I'm just gonna compress as much blood as I can in the long head of my tricep, right then the bottom here, which is the weakest part of my arm, where it inserts in here. Then what happens is, because the blood is in that area, when I go and do the heavy lifting, yes, which is in turn gonna tear the muscle fiber, which is gonna turn, create more hypertrophy, more muscle development from the heavy work, it's gonna be in the right areas of my arm because I put blood in that area first with the lighter weight. So just touching base on what Nathan was just talking about. So the title of last week's video was Do Bodybuilders Need to Lift Heavy? Now I think a lot of you actually missed the answer. Now in the thumbnail it said yes and no on either side. But a lot of you just assumed that the answer was no. But the answer was actually yes. You do need to lift heavy. All right, so I want to just reiterate what we were trying to explain to you guys was that you need to actually warm up and put the blood in the areas that you want to create that mind to muscle connection first. Then you build up to your heavy sets and then you scale it back after that. So we do do heavy weights. We do do our six rep range, right? But we usually do that towards the third and fourth or fifth set. And then after we do that, then we usually do a drop set in order to stimulate that hypertrophy and to get that volume in there. Okay, so I think that's a very important point that a lot of you missed in last week's video. Now, let's talk about aesthetics, muscle development. Let's use some common sense right now. Why do we train? Why do we go to the gym and do tricep exercises and do, do chest exercises and back exercises? People get too overwhelmed and caught up in trying to lift heavy weights. Now, yes, look, I fully understand. Essentially, the heavier you push, the more weight you lift, the bigger the muscle is going to be. We all got that. We all understand that. Let's talk about why we're actually here in the first place. And the reason we come to the gym, the reason we train, is because we're trying to develop an, a more appealing looking body, correct? Now, in this goal, in this journey of trying to achieve a more appealing looking body, what we're trying to do is it ain't just about lifting heavy weights. Let me tell you why. Why? Because a bigger muscle isn't necessarily a more appealing muscle. What we need to do, like I just said previously, is identify in your body which muscle is the most underdeveloped. Because you can go into the gym and you can smash your chest as hard as you want, have these massive big pecs and have little pathetic shoulders or have small triceps. What's the point on having a huge chest if you've got small triceps? So what we need to do is we need to adjust the tempo, adjust the weight of our workouts based upon the development in our body. Work out the weakest muscles, start by putting blood in the area. Example, if my short head of my tricep is huge, way overdeveloped in comparison to the long head of my tricep, and I'm, I'm just one of those meatheads that wanna just get humongous big arms, and we go in the gym, we just start pushing out huge dumbbells, that's great. 
bro, your short hair is just going to get bigger. That's it. Because it's the most developed part of your arm. And because it's the most developed part of your arm, it's going to take the majority of the work. So what we do is you start with the light work. This comes back to the video last week in saying, yes, we, we want to start the workout with light work initially. Put the blood in the weakest part of your muscle. Once the blood is in that part of the muscle, it's active, then go heavy. Otherwise, the most developed, that's what's going to keep working. And that's not what we want. We want proportion, balance, symmetry for an overall better aesthetic looking physique. Talk about Ronnie Coleman. Now, Ronnie Coleman, 100%. Is in a league of his own. Now, we can't look at people like Ronnie Coleman and Dorian Yates and go, man, I wanna be like those guys, I wanna lift like them, for, for a lot of reasons. One, it's just not safe because you don't have 90% of people out there don't have the knowledge to be able to lift like that, and they don't have the neurotransmissible function up here to be able to connect their mind with their muscle and lift that sort of weight without rupturing a disc in their back or, or doing some sort of knee injury or elbow injury. So, the smartest, most effective way to train for overall development is starting light, working out the weakest part of your body, increasing blood flow, and then please understand that yes, a stronger muscle is a bigger muscle, which is why we always market progressive overload. It is extremely important that we make sure every single week we get in that gym, we start with the lighter weights, we put blood in the weaker muscles, and we progressively get heavier every single set. So yes, we are lifting as heavy as we possibly can with the weaker muscle to create overall development through our body. Look guys, a target that we're trying to hit with our videos is we're not trying to target Ronnie Coleman and Dexter Jackson and the best pros in the world. These guys already have their own established method of training and these guys are top end athlete professionals. We're trying to target the everyday YouTubers, people who just want to maximize their fitness goals and, and maximize the development of the body as much as they possibly can the safest way, which is why we're preaching progressive overload, you know, putting blood in the weakened muscle first and then going on from there. Talk about that. Check out his triceps out. Oh! All right, we're about three sets in. See the booty. This is how you do a tricep push down. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so in case you guys haven't realized, but <laughs> as serious as me and Nathard with our training, we do like to have a good time as well. In between these sets, we do have a laugh, and I think that's very important for you guys to know. Take your training seriously, but enjoy life. Come on, big dog, let's go, drop set, drop set. Let's go, push some reps out. There you go, come on, focus. Squeeze. There you go, push it, push it. Easy five more, come on. One, let's go. Two, get there, get there. Three, good, resting at the top, squeeze and push. Four, last one. Come on, Nath. There you go. All right, super set. Burn City. All right, this is the last set. So fourth set, you can start to really push them out. If you need to use a little bit of momentum, you can. Throw the weights around a little bit. All right, drop it down. All right, finish with good form now. Here we go. Yep. Good, come on. Woo. Hammer time, baby. For this last set, we're gonna do a no weight arm extension, tricep extension. So the purpose behind this exercise is just to finish the muscle off. Obviously, now that we've pushed all the blood into this part of the tricep, we're just looking to squeeze our arms past our hips and just push as much tension into the muscle to finish it off, finish it off, finish it off. We're finishing it off. As easy as this exercise looks, when you're on a full pump and you've just done back-to-back -back exercises, it will fucking hurt, it will burn. All right, good. Okay, so essentially, so we've done the first exercise, which is you know getting the blood in the weak part of the tricep, which is what we Eddie, the camera's shaking. Sorry, bro. All right, and then um, <laughs> I come <can't> here. <laughs> For the next exercise, this is where we're going to lift the heavier weights, more compound movements, and we're going to superset dips with close grip bench, and we're just going to go heavy. The reason being is because we've just put blood in the area we want to work. Now it's time to tear those fibers. Yeah, this is the mass builder. So if you've ever watched my arm workouts, I generally just do like a weighted dip. So I'll start with body weight and then I'll work my way up to like say one plate, maybe two plates aside. 
um, and then I'll generally superset that with like, say a bicep movement. But because we're doing triceps on their own today, we're going to superset these two movements. So these are our two mass builder exercises. So the dips and then the close grip. Um. <laughs> hey, this is not bolted down, all right? Yeah. You do realize you weigh 125 kilos. Just All right, starting all right, so again. When you guys are trying to target your chest with dips, what I want you to do is lean forward, go nice and deep, and from the bottom of the movement, <laughs> squeeze it to your chest. <laughs> A little tip when training triceps. Every single person in the universe, I'm convinced. When they do this, like I just did, they kick their feet like this. The reason why they put their feet like that is because they're using their feet Back here is a counterweight to balance the body. So if you want to make it harder without applying weight, put your feet the other way. Yep, now, you'll, if you watch a lot of videos on YouTube, a lot of people will tell you the exact same thing. If you want to hit your triceps, you need to bring your center of gravity forward so that you can push the majority of the weight through your arms. Traditionally, if you do, do put your feet backwards, that is fine if you want to hit your chest. So depending on what you want to target, you need to think about this. Oh! Alright, this is called... A dip with the crimson orange run it ABW singlet. You can get this from the ABW store. You know what I really like about the singlet? How it has this like kind of goes down at the bottom a little bit there. It's a dip. Yep. Especially made for doing the dips. Look at those triceps. <laughs> oh! Oh! Ah. Oh! Alright. Millie. Why are you grunting at me? Don't square off with me, bro. Don't go. Oh, don't square off with me, bro. Do you want to go? You what? You want to start something? You, you run it, do ya? You run the show. This is this your gym? I thought it was my gym. Oh, you run it. Oh, that's it. It's on. It's on like Donkey Kong. It's on. It's on. Oh, is there filters? You can put filters on live. Look at me, Nate. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Sure. Open. <laughs> open your mouth. Go. It says to open your mouth. <laughs> Nothing's happening. <laughs> I don't get it. Should I put the weight on? 120 kilos already. 125. Let's make it 150. <laughs> I don't. Raise your eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> All right, put the 20 on, bro. Last set of tricep dips. This is our main compound movement. So we're going from 120 to 140. Yes. Get it, big dog. Now we're going for years. Well, you haven't added it on, mate. You skipping it. Yeah, this keeps going more muscle. <laughs> bro. <laughs> wait till you watch this back later. <laughs> All right, here we go. Fuck, look at that back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. When we hit the world... <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> the filters! <laughs> Keep going. Wait, let me do it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Four second eccentric. One second eccentric. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Wait till you watch this back later, bro. <laughs> Alright, we do train hard. <laughs> okay, back to it. Show us your teeth, mate. <laughs> and fuck. <laughs> <laughs> <I actually can't. laughs> Millie, show us your teeth, mate. Show us your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> Go. So when we do this, thumbs tilted in this angle. Reason being is because if you can do that when you start fatiguing, it's more likely to keep your elbows in by your side. When we go down, I want to create more of a bend in the elbow. So cut this part wants to come closer to your neck, more opposed to your belly button. So on the way down, four second pause, and each second track your tricep from the bottom of the movement, and then drive. I think a very important point to this exercise is, especially for beginners, you need to understand where to be lowering it on your chest. Okay. <sighs> As you can see, as Nate comes down, his elbows are getting tucked underneath the bar, which is creating a deeper stretch through his tricep. So the insertion of his tricep is near the elbow. And what he's doing is, as he's lowering it down, his elbows are going forwards, he's stopping at the chest, he's, in, he's initiating that contraction, and then he's pushing straight back up. So if you, we look from an overhead position, he's lowering the bar pretty much to the middle of his chest. Now, if you lower it to your sternum, so say he was slot, he, he slid this way, 
this way, just, just this way a little bit. And then he was sitting out of the bench a little bit. You can still get that stretch and you can probably go a little bit heavier. So it, it just depends on like what kind of rep range you're looking to do. Um, obviously starting off this exercise, we're going a little bit lighter and then we're going to build up to our heavy sets. Just touching base on what Eddie just said, it's also important to understand which part of the tricep we're trying to target. Now in this instance, as it's a compound movement, we're trying to target the tricep as a whole. So if you want to develop a full proportion balanced tricep from origin to insertion, from joint to joint, you want to make sure you're stretching the insertion and you're contracting the origin. What I mean by that is by creating a bend in the elbow like this, it's going to make sure the, the tricep stretches all the way to the elbow. When you press in the bottom of your chest, yeah, so just to reiterate my point before, if you were to lower it to the sternum, which is fine, you will be able to load it up a little bit heavier, but generally you're going to get a little bit less stretch, and that's fine if you want to just kind of work, you know, more the short head of the tricep. So if that's an area that you're lacking and you want to develop that, then that's that's what you would do. You know, you'd slide out, you'd lower it to your sternum, and you'd come down, and then all that pressure would build up, say, from here to the elbow, and then bang, you would lock it back out towards the top. So just note, adjust the movements to whatever you want to target and whatever parts of the body that you want to develop. There's no one size fits all in these kind of movements guys. You can maneuver the weights around and adjust them to your liking. Oh, Eddie over here, as you can see, the bend in his tricep is quite severe, meaning that he must be getting a really crazy, I better stabilize the camera. He must be getting a really crazy stretch through the insertion of his tricep right at the bottom near his elbow. As you can see, Eddie's body is very, very balanced, very beautiful body, and his body is developed, and that's purely because of his training. Good. All right, I'm gonna do a few more. Now, Eddie's fatiguing. He's gonna lever it down from the bottom of the mood when he starts fatiguing. I'm gonna lift it up. He's just gonna focus on the eccentric phase. Two, three, Four, up. Now Eddie just goes down by himself. Ready, elbows, tuck your elbows under, tuck them under. I'm gonna help you here right now. Ready, three, two, one. All right, I got it, ready? We've got three more like that. Three, two, one. All right, last two, Eddie. I want you to really fight it now. Three, two, one. Last one now, here we go. Three, two, one, there we go. All right, so we're two sets in now. We're going to start pushing up the weights a little bit and we're going to keep it body weight for the dips and then on the close group bench presses on the Smith machine, we're going to start building up our rep range to around that six to eight. You've got to remember that Nath weighs 120 kilos as well, so so I weigh about 80 kilos, so I might actually put on 20, so I'm about 20 under Nath's weight there. <laughs> 80, Nath's 120, which I'm means he's... one and a half eddies. You're one and a half eddies and about 30 millies. That's a lot of millies. <laughs> That's a lot of millies. That's a lot of teeth. <laughs> That's a lot of teeth. <laughs> this is Eddie Ang, 100 kilos in total. 102. 102. Yeah. 102, sorry bro. But oh, there's some hectic triceps bro. Alright, still on the way down. Ah. Bang. Now as we said before in the previous in the previous sets, on the first exercise, it's all about lightweight, getting the blood in the right area. As you can see, clear as day. Eddie's long head is as activated as it's gonna get. So now what we're doing is applying some weight and we're just pushing out reps. Oh. Yeah, there's a few secondary muscles working, oh. but that's no big deal because we know his triceps are fully working hard right now. That's some hectic oh. tricep. Let's go, Eddie. Oh. Repping the Crimson Orange, run it, singlet, oh. ABW. Good job. That was good. Four. Three. Two more. Two. All right, one more. I got you. One ah. here. This is it. Ah. This is where we grow. Ah. 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 Check out those lats. Can I zoom? This camera. Oh. All right, Nate. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. All right, let's go, Eddie. Young. Active. Okay. You. Ha. Oh. Ha. Oh. This is it. Now we're fucking growing, baby. Ah. Let's go, this is it. This is dark zone training oh. right now. Oh. Let's go, baby. Oh. This is called hypertrophy training right now. This is when you push it past his natural limits. Understand oh. that right now, it is pushing these reps out. That doesn't even matter that the form's not perfect because yeah. these are the reps his, his muscles cannot naturally take. So what we're doing right now is we're pushing past that natural potential. <laughs> Fuck. Ah. Every single rep, this is the last set now. Oh. Hey. They want us to train with CT Fletcher. Oh, that'd be cool. I to train with CT Fletcher. We need to. Let's go, Eddie. Every rep, one rep at a time. Ah. Right. Let's 
Kelly TFM in the background there. Ah! Oh! She's up. Uh, off season. Ah, fuck. <laughs> Now we're moving into a drop set on the barbell. So what we're doing is we're stacking it up with five kilo plates. By stacking it up, I mean we've got three ki three plates aside, all right? It's not really stacking it, but we're putting up the weight to 50 kilos total. What we're gonna do is 10 reps, and then we're gonna take the fives off each side, and we're gonna do another 10. So we're dropping down to 40 kilos, then we're gonna drop it down again to 30 kilos, and then we're gonna do just a bar. So it's four sets, and we're doing 10 reps on each one. Now, if you want to swing it about a little bit, that's fine if on the heavier end. Once you get down to that lower end, like you're just doing the bar, you've got to be doing that shit real strict. Real strict. Let's go, Nath. Yeah. Good. All right, dropping it down. All right, this is the hard sets. Good, man. Dark zone now. Three more. Alright, so that's the first 10 reps down. Oh, there's the angle. We're better off as strangers. Believe me when I say, loving me is loving danger. I'm gonna go a little bit narrower All right. on this last one. All right, there we go. So I can hit that peak. That's an important thing as well to touch base on. That's what I need to work on. And that's what I try to focus on on the lighter sets of my barbell curls is working the peak. So I'm leaning forward and just squeezing up to the up to chest side from full stretch up to chest side, just above the run at side. Hup. Oh fuck! Three more baby, let's go. Hup. Last two. One. Last two. one. There you go. All right, the next exercise we're gonna do, you know, hammer curl. But we're doing a oh, the LBZ ten. LBZ ten. We're gonna do the LBZ ten. So what? Start at sevens or? I can start. I'm gonna start at ten, so you can start at sevens. No, no, I'm going first. Oh, okay, okay. Exercise. We're doing the LBZ ten. Hammer, hammer kills. So we've done our busy tens with all of our bicep movements today. So we started with neutral grip and dumbbell kills. Is when we do when we do that exercise, the first lot of LBZ tens with that hand like this, we're targeting the peak of the bicep through here. And when we turn our hand that way, as you can see, see the difference. If I do the bicycle like this, it's going to target this part of the bicep, work more of the peak. When I turn this way, it's going to target the brachialis through here. And that's important for people that are trying to really establish which part of the arms they want to work on. Now, I know a lot of people, just for general purposes, even if you're not a bodybuilder, they want that thickness so that on the side of their arm like that, or when you're relaxed, you get that kind of drop look to the bottom of your bicep, like where it inserts into your elbow. So, because I haven't done that set yet, you can tell it's not really pushing into that area. But after I do that set where I pull up like this, this part of my arm will start to drop down a little bit lower. Not because it's growing straight away, but obviously because I'm putting blood in that area. So that's the purpose behind doing the hammer kills. Last one, I said bring your elbows forward, hit the bicep peak. This one you can say more neutral because the brachial is situated in the middle of your arm. Yeah, exactly. So as we said on the very first exercise, if we raise our elbows forward, we're going to be recruiting a little bit more bicep. And if you kept your elbows pinned back, you're gonna hit more forearms. So that's kind of what we're doing. The brachialis is a forearm muscle. So that's why we're keeping our elbows by the hips. We're just bringing the wrists up into our biceps. If you can get like a half a second hold at the top, that's what's gonna make the difference. That's what's gonna make your muscle really work. It's very easy to do a hammer curl and just swing it about and just f throw the weight around. What really makes your forearms work, and for me, what I found really made my forearms grow, is when I get that half a second hold, and then I release it with a little bit of speed to allow that stretch to go through the arm, and then bang, I hold it, I let it stretch, I hold it, and then I let it stretch, okay? Bang, squeeze, hold a little second at the top there. As you can see, it is brachialis. <coughs> right there, it's working hard. 10 reps, pick a lightweight start, and we're gonna progressively get heavier each set, and we're gonna do five sets. As you can Eddie's doing a slight swing right now as he gets heavier, which is okay, because as you can see right now, his brachial is still grabbing it right there and holding the contraction at the top. So even though he is swinging, he's still fighting to keep that form right. He's just pushing out those four straps right now. All right. Just reading through a message that Nath just received. One thing that training with Eddie has taught me is to keep up to date with your updates and follow your path to show what it's like to become the best. There you go. So we get a lot of um, inboxes, DMs on Instagram, emails from you guys, and we love hearing from you guys. So please continue to send us your thoughts. Tell us what you want us to talk about in our training videos, whether it be diet, training, bod or specific body parts, whatever it is. And um, we do actually really appreciate your support. So thank you for all the messages. Nate, do you want to say anything before we sign off? It was a pleasure.
pleasure. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's the end of today's vlog. So next week, we're going to sit down and plan um, a little bit more content to include into the next video. And we're also going to be planning our seminars, which I, I mentioned earlier. So we've written down a list of topics that we want to include in our seminars. Um, it's going to be like a two to three day seminar. So if you guys have anything that you want us to include in the seminars and talk about, it could be anything. Just shoot us an email or a message on Instagram and we'll jot down ideas because we're in the process of planning it. And um, we really appreciate hearing from you guys. So anyway, that's the end of today's video. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and follow Nathan on Instagram, Nathan underscore TFM underscore IFBB Pro. You can also follow my Instagram, Eddie underscore Active. That's it for today, guys. Peace out. We'll see you in the next video. Baby. Yeah. So, it's all about where you apply your mind, I suppose. Talk a bit louder. Keep them, pardon? Talk a bit louder. It's all about where you apply your mind. <laughs> oh! There's no stabilizer. No. Alright, action. Now. <laughs> Eddie hit record. Right. You know what should have happened? Tricep dips. Okay, when you, when you guys are trying to... I don't know what <laughs> Did you hear that? Bloopers! <laughs> As if you're not going to see me. <laughs> Alright, starting All right, again. So, action! <laughs> <laughs> We actually are training hard today. When you guys are...